think I'm up. Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Um, we finished the first part, uh, first game on Thursday, so now we should be starting the second game. So there should be another five cases. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, start from this save data, yeah. At least I hope we're starting from this file. Oh no, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, no, I don't want to start from there. Wait. No, wait. How do I go back to title? Don't save. Oh, yeah, I haven't saved a game. I'm sure. Wait, then how do I start the second half of the game? Do I have to choose something? Um, select adventure? No, but then that's... Wait, it's attorney adventures. Oh, that's how I do it. Great, Ace Attorney 2, Resolve. Okay. Your new game. Bespoke Tailor, awarded. Don't know what that means. Oh, before I, um... Before the stream, I looked at the special contest and saw that the characters had new outfits. So I changed them all into that just to see what they look like. And there we go! We already see Susato in her new outfit. Wait, I have to look at the screen. But it's a cutscene. Oh, that's cute. Whose grave is she standing at? Whose grave is she standing at? I like her voice. I wish we could hear um, the characters talking more. Wait, the the I find myself faced with another awful crime. She, her Japanese voice didn't say anything, but I guess it- what? Wait, isn't that... Brett? Swan lady? Whoa! I'm gonna be a lawyer at Susato. <gasps> oh, she's at Kazuma's grave. That's so freaking sad. Ooh. The Adventure of the Blossoming Attorney. I think there's a new girl. 13th August. Here I am again after nine months. The Supreme Court of Judicature... Judi... of Judicature? Whatever. Of Japan. I feel so nervous, but I must steal my nerves and find a way to compose myself. Father! Ah, oh, good, you're here. It doesn't do for a lawyer to be late. Oh, yes, um, good morning, sir. I hardly recognize you. You cut a fine figure, counsel. I wonder what her normal clothes look like. But you look as white as a sheet, and those wide eyes aren't doing you any favors either. Oh dear. The truth is, I'm so incredibly nervous, I feel utterly nauseated. I almost wish that I'd never been born. Oh my gosh, is that a, that's a little extreme. Goodness, not the sort of thing a father hopes to hear from his daughter, I must say. Yuji Mikotoba, professor of medicine at the Imperial Yume University. A man who, earlier in his life, traveled to Great Britain to study the latest advances in forensic medical science. And, of course, my brilliant father. Um, excuse me! <gasps> She's cute! 
Would I be correct in thinking that you're to be my lawyer in court today? Hmm. Oh, um, yes. Yes, that's right. Miss? Well, I, um... I want to thank you for agreeing to represent me. I swear. I swear on my life. It's a complete fabrication. This whole thing. Not more Phoenix right? Yes, more Phoenix right. We gotta finish this game. I was like, hey, Rico, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. Hey, Membami. Hey, Membami. I don't know what her name is. A uh, pun of. Born the same year as I and my greatest friends. Though unusual for a woman in our time, she works at the University Research Laboratory helping my father. Why do you like Phoenix Wright so much? Because I like the solving of the mystery. I like puzzles. I mean, the way that they go about it sometimes is really annoying because they go, they're very roundabout and they like um, just keep repeating themselves over and over. But it's still fun. It's cute. Also, um, I just need to see the end of this. Because I've been waiting for this for so long. And sadly, she's the defendant in today's trial. Accused of committing a truly awful murder. Are you feeling alright? Since we started talking, you seem... well, to have become a little flushed. Oh my, um, well, um, it's just that... Looks so gallant and dashing. Sorry? When I fall under your intense gaze, it... Well, it makes me feel rather bashful. Goodness, I don't think she knows. She hasn't realized who I am. <laughs> I've seen my little plan for this trial is going to work. Oh, what... what do you mean, Professor Mikotoba? If even your best friend can't see through the disguise, I think we can relax. D disguise Yes, I've never tried dressing this way before, of course, so I wasn't sure how convincing it would be. But this does make me feel a little relieved, as you say, Father. Your... Father? What? Is that... Is that you, Susato? I'm so sorry I didn't say something sooner, Ray. It's just that... No! What are you doing? What's going on? What? 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 That varsity uniform! That varsity cap! That varsity cape! That varsity badge! Look at you! You look for all the world just like a student of the Imperial Yume University! A male student! So glad you think so. It means all my preparations have been worthwhile. I woke at four this morning to make a start. But... But I don't understand. Why are you dressed like that? Well, you see... Cello Smooth! How you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Tuesday! It was the only way. Only way she would be permitted into the Supreme Court to take on your defense in this trial. My... my defense? I'm so close to finishing um, updating my island design for Animal Crossing. And after that, I will finally be able to restart Happy home paradise, and be able to visit your dream island, Regal, because I still haven't had a chance to do that. <laughs> I started a new job this week, so I've been exhausted. Never before in my life have I felt so frustrated at having been born into this body. Courts in Japan are barred to women. We're not even allowed to set foot inside the courtroom. Despite the fact that the laws of the land apply to all people, male and female alike. I do want to see how you change your island, though. <gasps> I managed to get the Tori Gates on my island. So if you want Tori Gates, I can do that. I need to um, find the Castle Gates on my Nook Shopping again, because I think I want to um, change their design to see what other looks they have. But women are forbidden! Just for today, I'll be leaving my true self at the courtroom door. So that I can act as your lawyer. Oh, Susado! You'd go to such lengths for me? Of course, you're my greatest friend. I just worry that I shan't be- I shan't be the lawyer you deserve. <laughs> hey Alex, how you doing? Thanks for joining! 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus... I'm gonna guess... 18. <laughs> oh no, I have complete faith in you. Hey. It's so strange though. I mean, you're such an accomplished judicial assistant already. Yeah, just because you're a woman. 
What a wretched reason. I mean, why shouldn't you be allowed in court? So gallant and dashing. Sure, why not? How go things? Things are good. Um, I started a new job on Monday, so I'm getting used to new things, so I am exhausted. Um, Ray? Please don't look at me like that, with those flushed cheeks and doting eyes. How are things for you, dude? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, it's just, you really do look so dashing. Y yes you mentioned that once or twice. <laughs> you should be pleased. It means you look convincing as a man. I am pleased, I think. It certainly helps to bolster my confidence today. Hey. You're managing to put on a brave face in all this, but I can see through it. I've noticed how your shoulders have slumped and how you're trembling ever so slightly. Susato. You do believe me, don't you? I didn't do it. I couldn't have. I mean, murder. Of course. You have nothing to worry about. Your conscience is perfectly clean. Isn't that right? Oh, okay, here are the rangers one tonight, so I'm in a good mood. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes, yes it is. Perfectly clean. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind about your innocence. Which is why I'll stand by you until the bitter end of this trial. Whatever happens, I'll always be on your side. Because that's what it means to be a defense lawyer. That means so much to me, Susato. You're gonna have to use a different name when you're, like, a male, though. Defendant, counsel, court is about to begin. Proceed to courtroom at once. Go in at once, Ray. If you're late, the judge won't hesitate to pronounce you guilty. Looks like Maya Fey. Who does? Susato or Ray? Oh. Oh yeah, I guess her hair because it's like straight bangs. Stand aside! I don't think I've ever seen her run so fast. Well, Susato, you've certainly surprised your father. Going to such lengths to be admitted into the courtroom, and with no prior experience of being a lawyer. There's simply no other way. That's all there is to it. But father... You haven't told her, have you? I mean, I'm right in assuming that Ray doesn't know how it came to this. And her jaw? Hmm, I'm gonna have to pay a close attention to her jaw. Yes, quite right. I've kept that information from her. It would only worry her if she found out that no other lawyer would agree to take her case. I didn't want to burden her with that. And is it true? The reason why every other lawyer is refusing to take the case? Is it really because of who the victim was? We should be making a move now, too. As you know, law isn't my field, but I'll do what I can to support my student. Thank you, father. Maybe it's me, I am blind. Well, I'm going- I'm slowly going deaf, so hey! <laughs> I'm Susato Mikotoba, a judicial assistant. Eight months ago, I accompanied a student of law on a study trip to Great Britain. But two months ago, due to unforeseen circumstances, I found myself back in Japan. I'm already blind, so I'll see you there. Ah! How many- Oh, whoa, his outfit changed too! How many times have I wished he were here, I wonder. Still, I have no choice now but to steal myself for the trial ahead. Hey, Toast, you look nice today. Oh, thank you! It must be because of my different glasses. <laughs> I was like, hey, Kirby, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. Wish me luck, Naruhoda-san. Thank you for the ukulele recipe. It was a nice surprise. When that wasn't intended, I just got that. Oh, no. Did you get old glasses? Ha, 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 ha. I'm wear I haven't worn these glasses in months, so I'm just like, let's bust them out. The court is now in session to hear the trial of Ray Membami. What? <laughs> what happened to your hair, dude? The prosecution is fully ready to proceed, Your Excellency. Oh no, I should change her outfit so that, um... I want to see her in her, um... The boy's outfit. Uh, gameplay. 
Oh no, I can't change it here. I have to. Oh, I have to change it in the main title. No. Okay, wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um. Okay. Um. Sorry to do this. Wait, did I already save? Oh well, whatever. Do 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 do. I just want to see um, what outfit she's wearing. I didn't realize that the new outfits would already be in play. Um, options? No, it's not options. Uh, special contents. Um. Taylor. Yeah, see, I, I just... Meh. Okay, there we go. Okay. Continue. And now we should see her in her normal outfit. Yes! Oh, she's so freaking cute! Oh my, what a cutie! Defense Council, are you ready? I didn't know you could change your outfits. For the second game, you can. I was just looking through the special contents and I'm like, ooh, new clothes, let's try it out. Yes, Your Excellency, we are ready. Whoops, I gave them two similar voices. Ready! Ah, yes, Council. According to your registration details, your name is, um... Ryutaro Naruhoro. <laughs> is that correct? Sorry? Oh, yes. I had to come up with a suitable male name for you th for this little venture. So I'm afraid to say I simply put down the first name that sprung to mind. Well, Council? Huh, um, yes, that's right. That's me. I'm, um, I mean... Yes, I am Ryutao. He who has dared to uphold the pride of the great Naruhoda clan. Ah. <sighs> oh. Imagine dressing them up in casual Friday cl clothing during a courtroom scene, looking totally out of place. <gasps> I would love to see them in casual outfits. Yes, please. It seems Yutaro may need to consider how to better uphold his manly act first and not overdo it. And those wild, wide eyes aren't doing you any favors either. Just relax and listen. Hello. What up? <laughs> a fresh face in this courtroom, if I'm mistaken. But the name Naruhodo, would that perchance be? You may be thinking of Ryunosuke Naruhodo, currently in Britain as part of a study program. This is, um... His cousin. That's right. Yutaro here has been studying in the provinces, but was called to the capital for this trial. I assure you, in matters of law, his knowledge rivals that of any of Tokyo's preeminent lawyers. Any of them. Once you see casual Samus Aura and you want to see casual everything, exactly. Zero Suit Samus? Heck yes. Tut, tut, tut. What a pitiful situation. Having been rejected by every lawyer in the capital, the accused has to call in a country boy. How dare you! So so those every bit of scallons and dash against any of your Tokyo attorneys. I won't have you making fun of her. Eh? Oh, um, uh... Please be careful, Lei. <laughs> what an unrefined tomboy we have here. But I wonder, is your gallant and dashing lawyer up to the challenge of defending you? His wide, skittish eyes very much suggest that he is not. Ugh, so nervous. Now that I'm standing in his shoes, I'm starting to understand what Naruhoto-san goes through. Like it or not, Eyes are want to flit. <laughs> I also definitely rock the cover of a muscle and fitness magazine. Uh, heck yeah, she totally would. Do you, do you not see how gorgeous she is? She's amazing. The case to be heard on this day is a matter of great significance to our national interests. In fact, it would be reasonable to assume that the outcome of the trial may well affect the very future of our empire. Just like the trial nine months ago. And yet, for proceedings of such importance, we have this unknown yokel by the dock. Dear me. Hmm. Perhaps this would be an appropriate moment for me to assess the defense. To determine whether you are sufficiently competent to practice in this courtroom. Nine months ago, when a certain other Naruhoto stood where you're standing now. The same judge tested him as well. 
And even though he was just a student at the time, not even of law, he passed the test with flying colors. For a trained and experienced judicial assistant like you, this will be easy. So, counsel, do you consent to answering some simple questions? Oh, where'd your cape go? Alright, it's time to prove myself. Cute! Yes, Your Excellency, but please do make them simple. Very well, to start with. You will state the name of the victim. I don't even have my court re record up yet. Yeah, that is simple. I couldn't forget it at that if I tried. Ah! <laughs> What's the matter? Now that I'm standing in his shoes, I'm starting to understand something else that Horasan goes through. Like it or not, mine's are wants to blink! It's not surprising, really. It's your first time in this position, and. in that guise. Even a bright spark like you is bound to flicker and falter under a little... Wait, flicker and falter a little under the circumstances. Oh dear, this is a dismal failure. Don't fret. You need only use the knowledge you've gained as a judicial, ah, judicial assistant to overcome the problem. Of course, the court record! Yes, the answer will be amongst all the key information about the case in the courtroom. That's right, just use R to open the court record. Then you need to flip to the people section with R. And don't take too long over it. His Excellency is watching you closely. He won't care. Alright, check the court record with R. That's where the information I need will be. I'm waiting, counsel. What is the name of the victim in this case? Uh, post-mortem report. 43. Ray 16. Defendant in this case. Giselle Brecht. Giselle, that was her name. Okay. Wait! Her dad is younger than Auchi, but he already has white hair. Okay, um, it is. Yuji Mikotoba. It's my dad. <laughs> it's Auchi. Okay. It's Giselle Brecht. The name of the victim who lost her life in this case is Miss Giselle Brett. Giselle Brett. A name that will never be forgotten in the courtrooms of our country, I'm sure. Correct. And being a member of our Empire's judiciary, you will be well aware of the significance of that name. You're a girl now? Yeah, I started off as Susato. I don't know why, but here we are. So, let me pose another simple question. As you know, Miss Brett was a visiting student from the Empire of Great Britain. Why then is her name in indelibly associated with our own Empire's judicial history? Obviously, you won't, have for you won't have forgotten that case from nine months ago. But if it's proving hard to recall the finer points, everything you need is included in the court record. Obviously, I still remember. That was the start of everything. Giselle Brett. Behind the woman's student persona was the face of... Queen Victoria! <laughs> the queen herself. Um, she was found guilty of murdering the visiting professor, so she was a killer! So they did a tutorial again? Yeah. Sadly. Nine months ago, a visiting professor of medicine at the Imperial Yume University was killed. And the culprit was... Giselle Brett. Yes, she was a killer. At the time, our country had just signed a new treaty with the Empire of Great Britain. And it was in the midst of this delicate diplomatic situation that the incident occurred. An Englishman, Dr. John H. Wilson, was shot dead. I believe he was an associate of yours, Professor Mikotoba. Oh wait, is this the judge talking? Whoopsies! <laughs> yes, I was indebted to the man. He'd been my mentor when I went to London to study forensic medicine. Indeed, it was I who invited him here to Japan as a visiting professor at the university. Naturally, the murder of an Englishman on our soil was a matter the government wished to resolve rapidly. 
Oh, okay, by the way, does my audio sound okay? I messed with some of my mic settings. So if I cut out or anything, um, please let me know. Indeed it was, which is why it was a secret trial. Why a secret trial was conducted here at Supreme Court. Already sounds good. Yay. Thank you. A student of the Imperial Yume University was arrested on suspicion of murder. A second year English language student by the name of Yunosuke Naruhodo. <gasps> With the help of his best friend, the student lawyer, the accused conducted his own defense. And exposed the despicable crime committed by Miss Giselle Brett. Question, does my audio sound less echoey or does it sound just about the same? Miss Brett eventually admitted to her crime. However, when questioned about the motive that drove her to take Dr. Wilson's life, she gave no satisfactory answer before the trial reached its conclusion. Uh, don't remember Phoenix Wright trilogy making you do that? Oh, they did! Every first trial was like, hey, here's the baby trial. I mean, every game they made you do a baby trial. Fluffy toast, fluffy! Hey, my hair is getting so long, but I want it to go longer. Immediately after the trial, the British government brought its consular jurisdiction into play. We were unable to sentence Miss Brett according to our empire's laws. It was decided she would be removed to Shanghai, China instead. Why Shanghai? There's a British consular court there. Correct. I oversaw the negotiations personally. The date of her transfer to Shanghai was finally settled upon last, last week. All that remained of our Empire's obligations was to see the woman safely on board a steamship. And yet, the very day before her departure, the Englishwoman was killed! Only the day before? That will do. I'm satisfied that the Council for the Defense is sufficiently capable of representing the defendant. Oh! Thank you, Your Excellency. Over the first hurdle. Now, a summary of the incident, if you please. Prosecutor Auchi. As is your wish, Your Excellency. The repugnant crime took place on the 11th of August in broad daylight. On the 11th of August? On the 11th of August, whatever. On the outskirts of the Imperial capital under a bright blue sky at a secluded bathing spot by the sea. The incident occurred inside a small beach hut erected for bathers to rest or change their clothes. The cause of death was a single stab wound to the posterior abdomen that pierced the victim's lung. An injury which proved fatal. So, on her, in her back. She was stabbed in the back. There were two persons alone together in the beach hut at the time of the victim's death. Miss Brett, in her bathing attire. And the accused, they member me. Thinking caps, everyone. Time to think. Accordingly, there can be no doubt of the accused's guilt, especially when we consider she had a powerful motive. The police arrived rapidly at the scene and promptly arrested the young lady. Mm. What was her motive? Well, that extraordinary description of events leaves me somewhat lost for words, I must say. That's certainly true. The prosecution summary was full of words that raised an awful lot of questions. As a lawyer, I really ought to pick up on the uh, pick up the prosecution counsel of what he said about a powerful motive. Because that's what I'm curious about. You're clearly exaggerating. Powerful motive is a blatant, blatant overstatement. Tut tut tut. Is the yokel boy using long words he doesn't fully understand? I beg your pardon? No matter. Let us put this to the cues, shall we? Then, mummy san you are a research assistant at the Imperial Yume University, I believe? Yes, I am. I'm working with the professor... I'm working with Professor Mikotoba in his laboratory at the moment. A 
I can confirm that. The defendant is an excellent assistant with a strong sense of responsibility. Fascinating to hear. Now, another question. Prior to your work with Professor Mikotoba, whose research were you assisting then? Oh, um, well, um, I was studying under Dr. John H. Wilson. Dr. Dr. Wilson? The visiting English professor who was murdered by Miss Brett nine months ago. That doesn't mean anything. If anything, she does want Giselle to go to Shanghai to be, like, found guilty and serve a punishment. No? This doesn't make any sense. <coughs> oh, I choked on my spit. <coughs> the Q's have a deep-seated respect for her former, former mentor, Dr. Wilson. Is that not true? Yes, Dr. Wilson was a wonderful man. Interesting. Then tell the court what deep-seated feelings you had towards the Englishwoman who killed him. You're- no, now you're just shoving words into her mouth. Well, obviously I was filled with hatred for what she'd done. A powerful hatred. Oh no. Ray, be careful of what you're saying. Ah. The motive was revenge. Plain and simple, your excellency. Hmm. Seems like a weak argument, but whatever. Well, it was clearly a trap all along. A wicked of him to use her day is under undying respect for her former mentor against her like that. I must find out more details and something we can use to bolster our defense. As a lawyer, I really ought to pick up the prosecution counsel on what he said about... Uh, being alone together. Because then who found her? Um, my mommy san Yes? What is it, Susa? Uh, I mean, um... Naruhara-san? I'm really starting to wish we'd made my alias Dew Tower of Susato. Please tell the court why exactly you were present at the baiting spot with the victim in the first place. Uh, why her? He worked with other people, I'm sure. See, it's a, it's a weak argument. I don't buy it. Why were you alone with her eggs? Mm. Why were you alone with her? That's not sketchy at all. Oh, well, no, that's not true. It's not like that at all. There were other people present. A detective who was guarding Miss Brett for starters. I was just asked to accompany Miss Brett as a companion, that's all. But let us be clear. At the moment of her death, you were alone together with the victim in the hut. You and no one else. The truth is, there's only one reason why this young woman accompanied Miss Brett on her bathing sojourn. It was the accused's last chance to take the victim's life. No. Because, as we know, the following day would see Miss Brett ex extradited to the British authorities in Shanghai. And the accused would never have an opportunity to dispatch her again. Um, whatever. Kindly refrain from conjecture, counsel. Exactly, that's what this is, conjecture. <laughs> the prosecution counsel seems to enjoy using provocative tricks like that. But for now, at least, we need to assemble more facts. Try not to let him goad you. Goad you. Whoops. Oh dear, this is really terrifying. But father's right. We need more information. As a lawyer, I really ought to put blah 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 what he said about the bathing spots, because that's the last thing we have to ask him about. Um, if I may, Prosecutor Auchi? What do you want, you fresh faced young yokel student? I wonder, could you explain, please? You mentioned a bathing spot. Ha! <laughs> My apologies. Clearly, my modernity has confused the poor country bumpkin's simple mind. Bathing spots are the very latest trends in health practices from the West. We are told that bathing in the water of the ocean is curative, therapeutic, and excellent for the skins. No, that's not what I meant. I was referring to the fact that Miss Brett had, to all intents and purposes, been found guilty of murder. Why would a known criminal have been relaxing by the sea? Ha! What do you have to say about that? 
for old time's sake, I believe. Sorry? Miss Brett was to depart for Shanghai the following day. Her final wish, as it were, was to enjoy a day at our country's wonderful coast. And the British Embassy put extreme pressure on our government to comply. But, but on what grounds will we agree to such a request? Would they? Because, as usual, our government is unable to stand up to foreign powers. In matters of diplomacy, it seems we don't even have the courage to decline the whims of a known criminal. Don't look at me, Professor! It was the government who granted permission, not I! But I remember you were just, like, throwing yourself over her feet when you were, um, her prosecutor, whatever. In any case, it was decided that with a, de a dedicated detective on duty, nothing could go wrong. But in fact, a murder took place. I said don't look at me! It was that young student girl who did it, not I! No one has proved that yet. I wouldn't provoke the man if you don't need to. I believe we all have a clear picture of the incident now. Despite her guilt being determined nine months ago, Miss Brett managed to avoid incarceration, instead continuing her research work at the university. If she was not guilty, why would she stay at the university? Why wouldn't the university kick her out? It's like, okay, you can stay in Japan, you just can't be at the university anymore. You killed one of our staff! Like, I don't understand! What the heck? Obviously, over that period, she and they would have encountered each other on a number of occasions. Seeing the murderer of the mentor for whom she had such great respect enjoying such undeserved liberty. Yes, even if it was only temporary until Miss Brett's extradition to Shanghai. You could hardly blame Ray for her feelings of anger and resentment. Must have been white. Ah! <laughs> Poor day. So, Your Excellency, if you'd be so kind as to peruse this exhibit. A photographic print that shows the scene of the crime immediately following the grim incident. Yes, thank you, Council. A tragic image. As you can clearly see, there is nowhere within the hut that anyone else could have hidden. Under the dress, under the table, behind a door. Uh, it was just guy's murder, huh? Uh, blah, 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 blah. I would read that. The court will accept this photographic print as evidence. The photographic frame blah 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 where the uh, victim's back is clearly visible. As I understand it then, the victim and the defendant were alone inside the beach hut at the time. This is deeply troubling, I must say. The finger of guilt points firmly at the defendant. Not if I can help it. Let's examine. Uh, victim Giselle Brett, female British, time of death, 11th August, around 2pm, ascertained by examination and witness statements. Cause of death, single deep stab wound from behind, piercing along and resulting in a fatal hemorrhage. Death would have occurred within minutes. Notes, extreme meiosis, pupil constrictions, was observed in the victim in both eyes. If you're, if you got, hmm, if you're hemorrhaging out though, I don't think your pupils would shrink. But I've never stabbed someone, so I don't know. Okay, uh, magnifying glass. She has a pen in her hand. There is a spilled bottle of something. That is where she got stabbed. That is... I can't believe the swan died, too. Okay, so that's her bag. That is her see-through bag. Hmm. What's in the cup? What's in the cup? What's in the cup? Okay. I want to examine the people again closely. 25, and we're 16. She's nine years older than us? Uh, it's been a long day, ignore me. <laughs> it's okay, I'm, I'm feeling really tired too. Cause I start work earlier now, like, every job I've worked since pandemic started, my hours have been getting earlier and earlier. Like, first job was 10 to 7, and then second job was 9 to 6, and now it's 8 to 5, so I have to wake up a whole hour earlier, and I am so tired. Well, Your Excellency, naturally the prosecution has much more to its case. We intend to prove the accused's appalling actions beyond all possible contention. She 
that end, I can confirm that we have multiple witnesses to the crime and damning evidence. Witnesses? But, but who? One of whom, I might add, is a highly respected police detective. I assure you, the testimony of these witnesses will leave no room for doubt. <sighs> Very well then, Council. Bring forth your witnesses. I, Takatsuchi Aochi, have been waiting for this moment. Ari? Oh yes, I haven't forgotten that trial nine months ago, here in this very courthouse. When that irreverent little student boy utterly humiliated me. Sleepy Toast, I am very Sleepy Toast. Ah, Rindos, get out of What? Yes! This is also the Alchi family name. will never be forgotten. You've become considered with age, Council. The old have to stand aside and make way for the new. It's the way of the world. May you never forget that. Oh, uh, Kazuma, you're so freaking cool. And in nine months, your hair hasn't grown out. Dude. Strike the head of a samurai who's... Top knot has been cut, and the bell of cultural enlightenment tolls. Yes, on that fateful day, my former self died. The start of your old mini Meiji revolution? Were you modernizing as well, Council? Silence! Since I swore revenge back then, there's been a minor miracle atop my head. Observe the ouchy growth. You see, you see this seed of hope sprouting forth from the barren expense of my crown. This is disgusting. I think that tiny growth is trying to tell me something. Um, I'm afraid I can't really see. Where, where is the hope exactly? I said silence! Today, I face another yokel student of the Nanohoda clan. Well, I will vanquish you. And my victory will be fertilizer for the seed of hope atop my head. You have been warned. With that, the prosecution calls for the witnesses to the stand. All of the witnesses to stand. Looks like the stakes are high on both sides in this trial. The prosecution and defense each have much to lose. A haircut is hardly comparable to Ray's life. Just shaven bald. Oh. Oh my word, you guys! Witnesses, please state your names and occupations for the court. Chief Inspector Satoru Hosonaga, Imperial Police Bureau. I'm in disguise, obviously, so I can go undetected. He has a turtle on his head! That's so freaking cute! I totally forgot his voice. And I am, well, the next book's name books, an author renowned throughout the capsule, in fact, yes. <laughs> Soon to be sold out, the satirical, I am a cat, a sensational success. Nah, by Sosaki Dasume. Who the heck is that guy behind him? Oh my goodness! Struggling student from the provinces, please, you needn't be in awe of me. I need it? It's only totally natural that you'd feel nervous in my presence, but all of you, please relax, call me Sosaki even. Um, yes. What on earth is Sosaki-san doing here? Try that carefully, Susito. That author fellow knows you from your time in London, doesn't he? He exposes you for who you really are. This will be over before it's begun. Yes, yes, of course. I know. I presume Sosaki-san won't have forgotten about me. I could certainly never forget him. Well, he does seem to have changed somewhat in the six months or so that he's uh, that it's been since the last I saw him. I'm jealous of his turtle hat. I know, I want it! I want to see the whole turtle! Like, move the camera up, please. And as for Inspector Hosanaga, that amazing outfit is hard to believe. Head bobs! The head bobs! Do I have something on my face? <laughs> well, your glasses for one. Although they don't seem to be helping you see. Thank goodness he hasn't recognized me either. 
Ah, I suppose it's a disguise, is it? I thought that appearing here in the clothes I was wearing at the time would make for a more faithful testimony. It is my guiding principle to carry out all testimonies flawlessly. Hmm. Well, I can appreciate why an Imperial Police Bureau detective might have been present. But what business did a writer such as yourself have being at the scene, Sosuke-san? Ah, well, you see. I had been asked that day to give a lecture. On the morning of the incident, in the Imperial Yume University's Grand Lecture Hall, no less. At Yume University? After the lecture, I had a very pleasant conversation with a researcher from the Medical Science Department. The professor over there, in fact. With my fa- with Professor Mikotoba? Yes, that's right. It was arranged by one of the newspapers. It wanted some story or other about two former students who'd studied in Great Britain. Of course, being a renowned author, the press never leave me alone. They secretly spy, snap shots, scribble stories, and sc scrupper by privacy. What does scrupper mean? Ah. As you can see, the conversation was written up in this newspaper here. Read it at your leisure, my provincial struggling student friend. I have plenty of copies. Thank you very much. Practically threw that paper at me. A newspaper containing an article about a discussion between my father and Sosuke-san. The debate became quite spirited. Anyway, following my interview with the professor, court record. Examine. Ha <laughs> What is that? Wait, that's not Waka High. Okay, um... If only I could read! But I can't! I think it's... It's a gibberish? No. E... something... Language... Something... Man... I don't know that one. Something... Nino... Hmm... Is he karate chopping his neck? Why would this be an important... thing? I wish I knew more kanji. The lady in question appeared and made a very unexpected announcement. I should like to go with everyone to see your country's coast. Those were her words. As I explained before, Miss Brett was never taken into custody. She continued to work in my laboratory, under strict surveillance, of course. At which utterance, the university immediately contacted the government to seek guidance. And the response was, permit Miss Brett to go... Permit? Miss Brett? Oh, blah, blah. To go as long as a detective accompanies her. Naruto's in Fortnite. What? Like, Naruto... Naruto or like, um, Boruto Naruto? Young Naruto or old Naruto? Uh, that detective I am at liberty to divulge was me, Chief Inspector Satoru Hosonaga. Shippuden Naruto? Oh my. It's so long ago, why would they put him in now? But I guess that's cool? Is Naruto making a comeback? Like, what is happening? Thereby, the entire party departed cordially for the seaside, it seems. It was extremely challenging to clear all other members of the public from the vicinity of the beach. <laughs> He's still sick, oh my gosh. Unfortunately, I am at peak physical fitness at the moment, so... I was able to carry out my duty flawlessly. Oh my, Inspector, you... Well, you do have something on your face now. Blood. Ah, oh, how unsightly. I do apologize. Because Boruto sucks. It really does. He really does. They had to bring back the grown-up kids to make the story good again. Because Boruto was such a little freaking brat. Does that mean- Does that mean you went to the beach too, father? No, no. Fortunately, I had work to finish off. But unfortunately, of course. It meant that, as my assistant, Renee was invited to take my place. Of course, being a renowned author, I didn't like to decline the invitation. Ah, but if only I had, I'd have- I'd never have seen that awful sight! Relentlessly, racked by remorse and regret! All they do is time travel back to Naruto because it's just way better. 
Very well. I must now ask you to present your formal testimony to the court. You will give an account of all that you witnessed on your impromptu excursion to the coast. So Seki, the guy that Jelly likes seeing stuff because of his animations. Because his face is funny looking! Of course, Your Excellency. Relentlessly wracked by remorse and regret, I am. I've been meaning to look up external Blu-ray players. I should do that before Black Friday, even though I don't think there's going to be any Black Friday sales, but whatever. Oh, wait, this scene! On the day of the incident, I was ordered on a special surveillance assignment in this, in this disguise. I just managed to catch that crab when I suddenly heard a caterwaul from behind me. I ran into the beach hut at once where I found the pair in question. Yes, 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 that young girl was astride the Englishwoman, dagger in hand, as she stabbed wildly. That's already false, she only has one stab wound. I saw blood on the blade. It proved to me that she'd stabbed the victim multiple times. She only has one! She only has... Didn't she... Well, I'm gonna refute their arguments with the post-mortem report. Indeed, it does appear from the testimony that both witnesses were here were present who saw it. I can speak English. The very moment of this heinous crime. What? Now, if you will recall, I promised evidence as well. What phrase did I use again? Ah, uh, yes. This was it. Damning evidence. Hmm. What have you there, Council? A so-called fountain pen, is it? Correct, Your Excellency. I found it at the scene whilst examining the body. It appears that in her dying moments, with a final ounce of strength, the victim clutched a piece of evidence that would positively identify her killer. What? Your Excellency, if you would cast your eyes over the photographic print of the crime scene once more. Ah, oh, goodness me. Yes, the victim is clearly grasping something quite deliberately there in her hands. That's right. The fountain pen. And if you would kindly examine the pen, Your Excellency. Ah! The owner's initials have been engraved into this ebonite barrel. R.M. Ne me mummy. Okay, he's Soseki Natsume. So he's S-N-S-H. It can only be De. Hmm. Yes, you're... Wait, I want to check the post-mortem report again. From a single wound was identified. Exactly, um, freaking liars. I think the swan did it. <laughs> swan is like, revenge. I don't want to go back to Britain. <laughs> the initials of the defendant. <gasps> no! She has the same animations as, um, do you know, scare? The fountain pen will be emitted imme immediately as critical evidence. The fountain pen. I don't have any science stuff, so I probably can't um, do any forensic stuff. So, have I admitted anything? Yes, your stupidity. I can't examine it. Okay, never mind. Uh, decisive testimony and damning evidence. There's a bright blue sky outside the courthouse today. Perfect weather to ascribe guilt, I feel. I don't understand. Prosecutor Outshift nine months ago. That's none of this man's poise. Add none of this man's poise. Counsel for the defense, you may begin your cross-examination now. Naruhoro-san. Naruhoro. Naruhoro. That means... Oh, yes, me! Is there another Naruhoro in my courtroom? Actually, there isn't even a single Naruhoro in your courtroom. Cousin Rutaro, pull yourself together, please. All right, I've seen this countless times as a judicial assistant. Find inconsistencies in the witnesses' testimonies to prove that they're lying somehow. That's all there is to it. That's how a real lawyer would handle a cross-examination. Let's see what I can do.
cross examination. First of all, you guys are blatant liars. Uh, she told me stab the victim multiple times. So, so can I press on either one? No, she stabbed Wally, and this is multiple times. Um, where I present this? Clearly a lie. You get it. With that accusatory cry that just welled up from deep in inside me, I think I finally understand. Every time Kazuma-sama and Naruhodo-san have stood here at this bench, the stakes have been very, very high indeed. But what's the meaning of that pose, Council? I'd like the witness to clarify something for me. Who? who what? Where? When? How? Ooh, I like this song. Not you, Soseki-san. This query is directed at Inspector Hosonaga. At me? In your statement just now, you said that the victim was stabbed multiple times. Yes, that's right. As I said, when I entered the hut, the defendant was already standing over the victim, bloody knife in hand like a murderous demon. And yet, that cannot be. What? Get to the point, please, Council. In the post-mortem report, it clearly states that the victim was stabbed one time only. One time is one time for your mind. I understand the other guy, his imagination runs well, but why would the detective lie exactly what he... In other words, Inspector Hosomaga's testimony is clearly flawed. Ah! Uh. And Sosaki-san! Me? You claim to have seen Membami-san in the throes of stabbing the victim. Yes, yes I did. Wellesley! But both you and the inspector confirmed the same points. That there was already blood on the knife that you saw the defendant holding. Yes, and? It's quite simple. We know the murder weapon was used to stab the victim only once. Therefore, there's no way there could have been blood on the knife if that single stabbing hadn't already occurred. Ah, true! Wait, I don't get it. Huh? And what exactly is your contention, Council? Are you ever going to tell us? Yes, Your Excellency. There's only one logical conclusion. What Sosaki-san in fact saw was not the moment that the defendant stabbed the victim at all, but the moment that the defendant, in fact, withdrew the blade from the victim's body. That... that can't... Me! Excellent work, Susato. You exploded at them with that objection and then proceeded to pull them apart systematically. <laughs> well, well, this takes me back. Yes, I seem to remember your cousin's stage is seen much like this in that trial nine months ago. A half-witted child with a half-baked objection attempted to steal the show. You're right. There are certain similarities. Except that so-called half-witted child managed to outwit the prosecution. It was only half a head of hair. Oh! Slander! My head is quite adequately dressed! In any case, all this talk of stabbing and withdrawing and multiple wounds. Ah, oh, you're pretty cool. Have a cat. Thank you! It makes not a jot of difference. It does, because then they clearly didn't see the moment of the stabbing. So they can't prove that it was her. What? Why not? Engage your brain, young man. When the accused first plunged a deadly weapon into the victim, that was the fatal blow. And it was that moment, just as she had withdrawn the blade, ready for her next strike, that the witnesses saw. But she didn't stab again, so... The knife was already tainted with blood because the accused had already stabbed the victim. But then they didn't see the moment of the stabbing, so you can't say that she stabbed them. Oh. All you have successfully shown with your little display is that the mustached author is prone to moments of extravagance. Ah. No, I haven't. I've proven that they didn't see the...
I am in agreement with the prosecution. If the defendant was seen wielding the blade at all, that is sufficient grounds for her actions to be viewed with suspicion. But, but if she was withdrawing the blade... Then we are back where we started. Sorry? Consider this, young yokel boy. If the student girl is innocent as you claim, then why would she have pulled the blade from the victim and with a demon's cold blood of composure too? The prosecution demands an explanation, and it had better be good. Anything I say will be just seen as conjecture though, what the heck? Why did they pull out the knife? To possibly do CPR to examine the damage that's been done so that she could possibly heal her? Like, come on guys. Oh yes, going for the jugular. Hmm? What does father mean by that? Let the court hear your answer then, counsel. Or they is right there, you can just... Ask her? The truth is, I don't really know. But I have come up with a plausible reason here. I have to come up with a plausible reason here, or we don't have a case. The reason why the defendant pulled the bl knife blade out of the victim's body was surely so she could save her life. She was studying medicine. According to the post-mortem report, the victim's death was not instant. That's correct. It's thought she would have remained conscious for a short while after sustaining the injury. Indeed, giving her the time to take hold of this piece of evidence that clearly indicates her killer. The point is... Being a medical research assistant, Membami san was compelled to act when faced with the wounded victim. Instinctively, she pulled the blade out in an attempt to save Miss Brett's life. Did you hear that, Your Excellency? It would seem this is the best we can expect of this young girl. I gave a reason! It's not totally, like, crazy! Hmm, indeed. Ah, uh, is it just me or does it suddenly feel much colder in here? Your Excellency, if I may. Speak, witness. I would like another opportunity to testify. In respect to the slipshod assertion just put forward by the Yokel Defense Council, I mean. <gasps> slipshod? How dare you, Hosomaga, after I, like, almost saved your- I saved your life like- no, I didn't save your life. But I showed that you were not a very competent detective. Two times. <laughs> An excellent idea, Inspector. Our young Yokel hopeful has a modicum of knowledge when it comes to the law, it seems. But in matters of medicine, he appears to possess not one iota of common sense. Very well, Inspector. I will permit your request. You will testify again before the court on the subject of the Defense Council's assertion. Yes, sir. I will do so flawlessly. I will slap your face. What? I, I don't know. Uh, these guys are weird. These guys are stupid. Forensic prime, whatever. Pulling a blade from a wound without thinking could cause heavy bleeding. That's basic knowledge that any medical research assistant with an ounce of sense ought to know. In other words, there's no good reason why the defendant would have tried to pull the knife from the victim. Let's not forget that the young student did have a motive for killing the victim. The man the victim murdered nine months ago, Dr. Wilson, was the defendant's highly respected mentor. Is, is what you just said true, Inspector? Could pulling a knife from a wound really cause the wound to bleed heavily? Yes. Think of the weapon itself as a stopper in the wound that prevents excessive blood loss. Until a doctor is ready to provide proper treatment, that stopper shouldn't be removed. Oh, I see. Ha! This is why Yokel should stay on the farm. Even a quack from some obscure mountain village would have such basic knowledge. Anyone who's ever given a little poke with a knife and pulled it out again knows it. Are you saying you stabbed someone, Elchi? What? No. Oh. oh, I've never stabbed anyone, you see. Or pulled a blade out of a wound, so... Of course you haven't. I didn't bring you up to behave like a bandit. Father, 
is it true what they're telling me? Yes, it's basic remedial knowledge for the medics. Ray, Ray would have been well aware of it. If she were to claim ignorance of such fundamentals, that would prove fatal in many ways. But then, why would Day have done it? Could she have pulled out that knife in full knowledge that it would be fatal for Miss Brett? I don't know. Day never once mentioned anything about the knife to me. It seems almost impossible to believe, but... Could my friend actually have... Suzato. Yes? Pull yourself together. Why does he keep calling her Suzato? Like, aren't they gonna find out that it's her then? And not... She's not really a man. We mustn't lose sight of why we're here. Ah. Council, it's time for your cross-examination. Oh, yes, Your Excellency. However... I must warn you that if your cross-examination fails to identify any issue with the established facts, I will be moving my adjudication immediately afterwards. I understand. Believing in your clients and fighting for their cause until the bitter end. I knew it would be hard, but I had no idea it would be this hard. That's what she said. <laughs> Primer. Okay, that's what the word said. Pulling the blade from the wound without thinking cut out heavy bleeding. Okay, um, man, I don't, I really don't see any holes in this testimony. So, I think I just have to press everything, which freaking sucks. You say doing it without thinking could be a problem. Does that mean that if you use due care and attention, it would be alright? I wouldn't have thought this needed spelling out, really, but... The blade is like a stopper in the wound. Remove it, and a serious hemorrhage will occur. In other words, a medic would need to be uh, present before any attempt was made to withdraw the blade. Doing it without thinking would be madness. You just can't do it. Oh, well, thank you for such a thorough explanation. That wasn't an explanation! Like, you... <sighs> whatever, whatever. Well, we're following this game's logic. Just do it. <laughs> you see, Council, when you act without thinking, the result is a bloodbath. Uh. Back to the witness testimony, please. The only thing I can see, like, a problem with is the motive, because it's like, you don't know her. Like, shut your face. Stop with the conjecture. In that case, there's an obvious explanation here. Which is... Clearly, the defendant, Rei Membami-san, does not possess an ounce of sense. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that, Professor Mikotoba? <laughs> I'm not sure that you should be labeling your best friend as lacking in common sense. Just do it, wasn't there a Nike motto I was doing? Isn't it still Nike's motto? Just do it. Well, I thought it would be better than labeling her as a murderer. I don't know, young people today. If that's friendship, I don't understand it. Yoko Toast, I'm sorry, what? I like Jordans. I can see the appeal of Jordans, like they do look classy, and like the designs that come out are, are nice, but some people, they just buy too many, and then they never wear them, and I'm like, they're just gonna rot in your closet. That's sad. Careful, counsel. A lack of common sense can be a very dangerous thing. Oh dear. That recalled on me rather badly. That's life, I'm afraid. A lesson everyone must learn. Hopefully you can see now that this is really basic medical knowledge. Being involved in medical research, Membami-san would certainly have been aware of it. I want some boba right now, damn it. I usually bought one pair every year or two. I have my current pair for like five years now. See? You are enjoying your sneakers. Like, you're buying them because it's, like, it's the one thing you like to spend money on. Like, one of the few things you like to spend money on, you actually use it, so it's good. But some people, they go crazy, and they just buy everything, and never touch it, never use it. They might display it, but then it's just, like... After that, what are you gonna do with it? As long as it makes them happy, I guess. I mean, they are helping the economy by, like, you know, money circulation, whatever. 
Size nine and a half, harder to find than you think. Yeah, because that's a common shoe size, is it not? In a verse, there's no good reason why. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever, press everything. But the defendant had suddenly encountered somebody she knew lying on the ground, bleeding to death. The sight could have shocked her delicate sensibilities, causing her to remove the blade inadvertently. I really don't think inadvertent actions can be explained in the and explain this. The woman is a medical research assistant. I can't imagine she would have she would behave so irrationally. Oh. But irrational behavior is a woman's prerogative, isn't it? Susato, no! No, it's not! How dare you! Oh dear, you have a lot to learn about women. Only a small-minded man could have such bigoted views. Yes, Susato. Oh dear, perhaps I'm letting my male persona take hold a little too much. Well, have I managed to convey the basics now? That should cover the medical side of the arguments. Let's not forget that the young student had a motive. Whatever the motive, it just isn't in Membami-san's nature to do something so awful. But she had both motive and opportunity. That's very hard to argue against. You don't know the defendants! And you, Council, do not appear to know the law! Yes, evidence is the only way to convince the court of your argument, not feelings. With this, fledgling to defend her, I'd almost say I pity the accused. So do I. Inspector, you will reiterate your point about the defendant's motive, please. Ah, yes, Miss Brett was in many ways the sworn enemy of Menmami-san. And so did he change this? Let's not forget. Nope, it's still that. Okay. Depends on what medical research she does. That's true too. Well, yes, that's true. Dr. Wilson recognized Menbami-san's talent and offered her the position of assistant despite her being a woman. She was extremely grateful to him. Yes, the Englishman appears to have been a very broad-minded individual. Dr. Wilson had no time for outdated traditions. He met with opposition, of course, but he believed firmly in Menbami-san's abilities. Uh, clearly the defendant was in the man's debt, which only serves to prove my points. This is hopeless. I can't find a single crack in this testimony anywhere. If they knew that withdrawing the knife from the wound would threaten Miss Brett's life further... I just can't think of any way to explain why she did it. Susato, it's at times like this when it's especially important to remember the fundamentals. Fundamentals? Evidence is what counts in the courtroom, isn't it? Of course, but I've been through the court record dozens of times already. I think perhaps you're forgetting something, though. You needn't take the evidence at face value. You can and must examine it in greater detail, too. Ah. I realize this is your first time playing the role of lawyer in the courtroom. So if you need reminding of the rudiments, you need only ask. I'll do my very best to help. Examine the evidence in the court record? It's an idea, certainly. What should I do? I know what to do. Not dumb. Not to think of it. Kazuma-sama and Naruhodo-san were always turning evidence over and over in their hands. Yes, I need to examine things in greater detail with A. Ah. By the look in your eyes, I see it's coming back to you. Go through the court record again and have a thorough look at everything. You may just find a clue. Yes, I'll do it straight away. Oops, I didn't do it straight away. Okay. Hmm? Oh, wait, that's just that. Back, back, back. Uh, this is just magnifying glass. Now I could flip the newspaper. Oh, she's so cute in her cape! Oh my gosh. This is a newspaper from Sosaki-san. There seems to be an important article on the back page as well. Exclusive deadly poison stolen from Yumei Medical Research Laboratory. From Yumei's medical research. Father, isn't that your lab? What the? Let me see that. The, the poison's been stolen. It's this morning's paper that Sosaki-san gave us. Are you saying... 
You didn't know? As embarrassing as that is for the head of the laboratory, I didn't. I've not heard of any any such thing. Where on earth could the reporter have gleaned his information? Come to think of it. There was no article mentioning the story on our paper this morning, was there? The highly toxic poison we've been working on in the strictest confidence. I put Ray in charge of the project. Hey, She was managing it? If what's written here is true... It means that she tried to hide the theft from me. And moreover, the details were leaked somehow. I don't believe it. You need to read this article very carefully. Poison article. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -do. So can I read the poison article? or Okay, I should examine the front side suit just in case. Raucous England returnees tell all. This is the interview with you and Sosuke-san, is it, father? It looks as though it was quite an exchange. Yes, he became a little overanimated when he was talking about his time in England. The pho photographer managed to capture this moment, uh, his hand karate chopped me on the neck. I do hope you weren't hurt. Okay, so that's it for the front then. Nakarunebar. This one's an ad for a carnival with an ox head on it. I think that's it. Is that Ochi? <laughs> okay, then let me try examining this. If we take off the pen's lid. Ooh. Now let's unscrew the barrel, shall we? Oh no, am I doing things too early? It's clear. This must be the little reservoir that holds the ink. Yes, you fill it by drawing ink from a bottle up through the nib. Is something wrong, father? Just that there doesn't actually appear to be any ink in there, that's all. Oh, yes, you're right. It's pretty much empty. Well, it could be on the verge of running out, I suppose. A uh, small reservoir into which ink can be drawn. There is a very small amount of liquid still inside. But what kind of liquid? Is it ink or poison? Some sort of emblem here. Look! But isn't... Uh, it isn't the Yume University one. It must belong to some other organization, I suppose. A business of some kind. But that would seem to imply that the pen doesn't, in fact, belong to Ray. Uh. I don't think this pen belongs to her at all. Then, who else is RM? Okay, I'm gonna read this poison article. Following a lecture at Yume by Soseki Natsume on 11th August, it's come to light that a very disturbing incident took place. A deadly poison being secretly developed in the university's forensic science laboratory was stolen. Even the smallest amount entering the body, either via the mouth or via a wound from a poison-laced blade, would prove fatal in minutes. Current methods cannot detect the newly developed chemical. The university would have to be consulted. One onset of symptoms occurs a minute starting with the impaired breathing and ending with acute contraction of the pupils prior to death. Such symptoms would be suggestive of this toxin. It's apparently an entirely new synthesis of alkaloids and rumored to have been commissioned by the military. So, um, it's said in the post-mortem report that her pupils were dilated. So, here we go. It, wait, was it dilated or... um? Pupil constriction. Never mind. Yeah. So that's how she died. She died by poison, not by stabbing. Um, so where would I present that? Pull the knife from the victim. Let's not forget the... I've seen this. There are dinosaur eggs in that pen. No, no. <laughs> where would I present my new evidence? I. So the new evidence I have are the poison article and the pen. What did the pen look like in the picture again? Okay. I don't know if the pen is open. I she stabbed herself. Hmm. I don't know. 
Poison article. And his highly respected mentor to have a motive for killing the victim. There's no good reason why the defendant would have tried to pull a knife from the. If if she was already poisoned and dying from it, there's nothing she could do to stop it. Cause heavy bleeding. Was she thinking that maybe she could bleed the poison out? But that wouldn't make any sense. Walk through time! <laughs> uh, but the, but the, but the, I can't believe I'm using a walkthrough for this section. Um, cross examination. Uh, presented on the third ri why the knife had to be pulled out. I still don't understand why pulling the poison would have to do with the pulling of the knife, but that's what the game says. The murderer was the turtle on that guy's head. Ha <laughs> ha! But the turtle's too cute! The turtle's the mastermind, just like the swan was the mastermind of the other girl. So hey, pancakes, long time no see. I hope you've been well, dude. No, there is one possibility. One very good reason why the defendant might have decided to withdraw the knife from the victim's wound. Exactly. Too cute. To kill! <laughs> what? The yokel not only has a poor grasp of the law, but is also a poor loser. Tell us then, what possibility do you think you've identified? It's here, in this newspaper article. An article about a deadly poison having been stolen from a laboratory at U Imperial Yume Yunu. Hey, I hope you've well too. I've been well. I am so sleepy today because I had to wake up an hour earlier than normal. Because my work starts at 8 now. Ugh. The victim perished from a stab wound. Poison has no relevance in this case. You shut your trap. But... Prosecutor Elchi, you will let the defense speak. But, but in newspaper article, the court cannot rely on the kind of hearsay those wretched publications carry. Oh dang, an hour early. It's a lot of time, dude! 8 o'clock is so early. Counsel for the defense. I'm going to need some tangible basis for your claim. You will indicate to the court precisely what part of the newspaper article mentioned, mentioned affirms your assertion. Your Excellency. Yes, of course. Thank you. Early toast. I, I'm, I'm a night owl. I go to sleep so late. Now I'm going to have to go to sleep earlier. Ugh. I've been getting out of bed past 9 at home. I dread having to wake up early when I have to work somewhere that requires it. Ugh, right? He calls a loser, but when he's a loser, that spot of hair will fall out, I bet. I hope all of his hair falls out. They would never have done something to further endanger Miss Brett's life without just cause. The reason why the defendant pulled the knife out from the victim's body is explained in the article where it says... Uh... Uh, Even the smallest amount would prove fatal. Ah, deadly in tiny quantities. The article reveals the following property about the poison in question. When the toxin enters the body on a knife laced with the poison, it's, a ra it's rapidly absorbed and causes death in minutes. Uh, are you suggesting... If the knife used to attack Miss Brett was laced with this very poison, it would explain why the defendant, Membami-san, would have withdrawn the blade as soon as possible. Yes, the truth is. It was an attempt to stop the poison from entering the victim's body. What? But where would the poison have come from? Blah, 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 blah. This is complete and utter nonsense. Not at all. The defendant withdrew the knife blade from the victim's body not to accelerate the woman's demise, but to save her life, and the prosecution cannot deny the possibility. Have you not read the post-mortem report? The cause of death was hemorrhage. The word poison appears nowhere in the document. Oh, well that's... That's because by acting quickly to remove the blade, the defendant prevented the poison from taking hold. 
please. This is clearly desperation. The weasel's last breaking of wind. Winston has nothing whatsoever to do with this case, as I believe the defense is well aware. That's where you're wrong. We have no proof that the information in this wretched newspaper article is, uh, is at all reliable anyway. In that situation, what the student should have done is wait for medical assistance to arrive. She would have been dead! But instead, you claim she suspected poisoning and took the potentially lethal decision to remove the blade. She must have had a strong reason for her suspicions then, or the argument makes no sense. Exactly. Well put, Inspector. On what grounds did she do it, hmm, Yoko? I dare day suspect the stolen poison was involved. If you want grounds, I'll give you grounds. What? You can't possibly. From your expression, Council, it would appear those are not empty words. But naturally, as you stand in this courtroom as a lawyer, you must be aware that words alone, empty or not, are of no value in our modern justice system. The court demands evidence. Yes, Your Excellency. I'm well aware of that fact. I've seen it many times. From my place I decide in the Old Bailey. In that case, Counsel, you will present the proof to the court now. What evidence demonstrates a clear link between this case and the Poison newspaper article? Is it not the post-mortem report where... they said her eyes were constricted? Yeah. I'm right. I'm smart. I can do this. I can deduce. I would ask the court refer to the notes section of the post-mortem report, which reads... Extreme meiosis, pupil constriction, was observed in the victim. Ah. Uh. Clearly, being a yokel with no knowledge of forensic science, I have no idea, so please do tell me. Presumably, the fact that this condition of the victim was noted in a post-mortem report means that it's an unusual symptom of death. <laughs> well... Under normal circumstances, the pupils dilate when someone dies. If there was extreme constriction instead, that's most certainly unusual, yes. What are you doing, you yokel detective? In the newspaper article, there's the following information about the stolen poison. Onset of symptoms occurs in minutes, ending with acute contraction of the pupils prior to death. What? If the defendant, upon seeing the victim stabbed in the back, happened to notice that the pupils of Miss Brett's eyes had constricted severely, la la la. Yes, as a medical research assistant, she would have suspected poison immediately, without doubt. Uh, uh. Prosecutor Ouchie, I think you'll agree. This is very compelling evidence. <laughs> you, you. Yoko student and Yoko professor! I believe the defense has expertly demonstrated a credible reason for the defendant's actions. No. Yuji Mikotoba. Yes, Your Excellency? I believe you are best placed here to confirm or deny the veracity of the defense counsel's argument. You will tell the court the truth about the details reported in this newspaper, please. It pains me to admit it. But I'm afraid, I don't know. You don't know? The toxin was kept under lock and key in my laboratory, certainly, but I was unaware of any theft. Do you mean to tell the court that the reports of this theft are unfounded? No, Your Excellency. Without returning to the laboratory to investigate myself, I couldn't say. Ha! Listen to the bumbling academic! Unaware of the theft of the secret state research from his own workplace until he reads of it in the newspaper. I will shave your head, man. I take full responsibility for the incompetence of my supervision. Father. <laughs> a pitiful situation for a university professor. You should have more control over your students, rather than allowing them off on killing sprees. That's... That's totally unfounded.
I will shave your head, man. That's not a threat you hear every day. But he cares a lot about his hair, so it is a threat to him. None of this is Professor Mikotoba's fault. It's all... It's all my fault. Hey. Man, bobby san you stand accused here. Outbursts like this will not be tolerated. But it was me. I was the one who noticed that the poison we were developing had been stolen that day. What? So you knew? I... I've been placed in charge of overseeing the project. It was the day that the professor and sozaki san were interviewed together for the newspaper. That's when I noticed that some of the poison was missing. Just a tiny amount it was. Why didn't you let me know immediately? I... I was scared. The whole project was supposed to be confidential, but some of the toxin had somehow been taken. So, I decided to try to get it back before anyone else found out. Because I had a very good idea who the thief was. Thief? You... you don't mean... Yes, of course. It was that dainty Englishwoman. Miss Giselle Brutt. That's why I decided to join the little group of people going to the seaside. Inside the beach hut, I confronted Miss Brett. But she just sat on a stool at the back of the hut, smiling sweetly at me, as if she knew she was untouchable. I know it was you who stole the poison. Well, no. Whatever do you mean? And then... She suddenly got to her feet. Before falling to her knees in front of me and... And then collapsing on the floor. That's when I saw the knife in her back. I couldn't understand what had just happened. And then, a moment later, I was seized with fear. The pupils of her eyes had... It shrunk to tiny pinpoints. I don't believe it. In other words, realize that the victim was suffering the effects of the stolen poison. My mind started racing. I hadn't seen anything past Miss Brett's lips whilst I'd been with her. Which left only one possible way for the poison to have entered her body. And the blade of the knife in her back. And that train of thought was what spurred you to withdraw the blade. Yes. If the amount that had entered her bloodstream was small enough, she might still have a chance. That's what I hoped. Really? I... So sorry for staying silent all this time. Then why would she have the pen? Your attempt to hide the truth of what happened is not something that can be overlooked. However, I have duly noted the courage with which you confessed in the end. Thank you, Your Excellency. It's barely perceptible, but I do think... The balance has shifted a little here, in this courtroom now. Your Excellency, do not be deceived. The victim just collapsed before your eyes, you say. Well, Membani-san, if that is the case, perhaps you could explain how Miss Brett came to be stabbed. Well, um... We have no answer because the simple truth is that you stabbed the victim motivated by revenge. But you have no conclusive evidence to prove that assertion, do you? Where is the knife? Why haven't we seen that in the evidence yet? <clears throat> oh. I have evidence, and it's very much conclusive. What's the prosecution counsel up to? It was brief, but he hesitated for a moment there. I'm almost sure of it. You will produce the aforementioned evidence at once, Prosecutor Auchi. Perhaps some praises do, young yokel student. Where's the knife, said the chef and Michael Myers. Ah! <laughs> what? I'd imagine there would be no need for me to submit this evidence. But you've brought this on yourself. Why is there another similar rip? 
What the? Could a more damning shot exist? The cruelty in the air on that beach is almost palpable. The evidence, more than any other, reveals the true extent of the accused's murderous nature. Or it shows the precise moment that Men mummy san plunged her dagger into the victim's back. Or it shows her pulling it out. Holy mother, the these guys are stupid. No, that's not true. No. I... I don't believe it. Ah, uh, no, no. Give me that... That picture in the evidence now so I can examine it. Come on. Order, order, order. Council for the defense, was it you who was responsible for that shrill scream that just pierced my courtroom? Perhaps his voice has yet to break. These yokels are slow of mind and slow to mature. Can you get characters being stupid? Pfft, never. I. What am I thinking? I'll show you who's slow to mature. Careful now. Susanto is starting to show her face here. It is often said that a picture is worth a thousand words, and here we have ample proof. The court will accept this extremely cogent photographic print as evidence. Remaining photograph... Entered in a court record. I can't believe he's had a photograph like that up his sleeve the entire time. It has the same... Why does it have the same, like, kind of rip as the newspaper article? We're... So seki san Gave us the newspaper. So he had this picture with his... That means his photographer. His photographer all... We have to get the photographer in the witness stand. Because I think, yeah, everything else is just like, yeah, whatever, knife, stabbing, she's on the ground. It's this crease, though. That is the damning evidence. See the crease! Get the photographer in here. It's such a stark image. I'm generally lost for words. Wait a minute. I... I don't understand. How did you... I mean, who took that photograph? Yeah, who did take it? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, not options. Um, Because it was just a hut. So that means there was a hole. How did you take that photo? There's a hole here! She was sitting! That's where she could have been stabbed! Oh my gosh. Then who stabbed her? Hmm. Yeah, there's clearly a hole. How would you have noticed to snap a picture at that moment? Uh, yeah, different angle. That's of no importance here. Stop trying to divert attention. No, it's of the, all the importance. Because the first one, she's lying with her head like to us, but in the second one, her head is away from us. So how did this, someone take that picture? Unless there was a peeping Tom. Get the photographer in here. Oh. That's an absurd thing to say. It's crucially important. Whoever took this photographic print was a witness to Miss Brett's death. The court must be allowed to hear this person's testimony. Ah. I will uphold the defense's demand. The prosecution will reveal the identity of the person responsible for taking this photograph at once. Well, I'm afraid I can't do that. Pardon? You see, this print arrived at the Imperial Police Bureau headquarters by express post yesterday. There was nothing to indicate the sender's name or address. The provenance of the print is unknown. Goodness. Are we to understand that, Council? That in full knowledge of the fact that this photograph has the murkiest of origins. Do you nevertheless believe it to be fit for submission as evidence in the Supreme Court? When you first produced that print before, I noticed that you hesitated for a brief moment. Because you knew that it wasn't completely reliable evidence, didn't you? Silence, you yokel student and blabbering professor! Rude. What matters is the blatant truth that this print so eloquently expresses. The defendant has already admitted to pulling the blade from the wound. Clearly this isn't the moment that the knife was plunged into the victim's back, but... 
the moment it was withdrawn. Don't waste this court's time with your ramblings. How would... How would they have gotten Giselle on the ground, stab her, and then get her out? Like, uh, someone had to have stabbed her from behind. Indeed, without knowledge of who produced this print, we have no means of verifying the claim. It's Soseki's photographer. And the scene it captures is without a doubt the most compelling evidence presented to the court. If the defense is unable to shed any further light on the matter, I believe the conclusion is clear. No. Oh. Susato. This is the time for you to fight. If what you established so far is true, then there can be no doubt. This photograph shows the moment that Ray withdrew the blade from the victim. Yes, we just need to prove that somehow. <laughs> You'll have plenty of time to rue your defeat on the slow train back to the provinces. And to rue the day you came up against Pakitsuchi Aochi in, that, in the court of law. If I can't determine who took this photograph, then the trial is going to come to an end. There must be a clue somewhere. There must be some way of working out who took it. I know who took it! Well, counsel? Your Excellency. The burning question is, who took that photograph? And the truth is, I have the answer. This isn't about whether I can or can't come up with the answer now. I simply have to. Oh yeah, Kirby, how far did you get in this game? Are you... You said you started the second game a while ago, right? Oh, excuse me. The identity of the person who took this dramatic photo photograph of Prince. You finished case 2 too? Ah! Is, I assure you, something the defense can and will reveal. That's what she said. Ah! <laughs> what? No, you can't possibly... But as you so boldly claim that you can, please do enlighten us. Unfortunately, I'm unable to present a name. How utterly underwhelming. Did you really believe you could shut up? However, I am able to present evidence. The defense has a piece of evidence that reveals important details about the photographer's identity. What? Very well then, counsel. Present your proof to the court. Which piece of evidence do you claim reveals something about the identity of the mystery photographer? What is that? The newspaper again. Raucous England attorneys tell all. It's not the headline that's relevant here, Your Excellency. It's the photograph. <gasps> it's not a crease. It's a crack in the lens. If you look at it closely, you'll notice that there are some white lines on the right-hand side. Ah, yes, indeed. They had already caught my eye, as it seems. As it happens. Ha! What of it? A shadow of some kind, presumably. From the branches of a tree or the like. Why are there trees inside a root, dumb idiot? There are no trees growing inside my laboratory at the university, I can assure you. Now, if you look closely at this photograph... Good gracious! Yes, exactly the same pattern of lines is present on this photograph, too. Well, well, that, that tells us nothing. Ha! Yes, it's a shadow of some kind, definitely, from the branches of a tree! There wouldn't be any trees growing inside a hut at the beach, Council. <laughs> What's quite remarkable about it is that the two patterns are absolutely identical. How could such an extraordinary similarity have transpired? The curious matching pattern that appears on both photographic prints is the result of a camera defect. Obviously, it must be due to a problem with the camera used to take the photographs. With, with the photographic device. Yes, we can confidently say that the camera's lens must be scratched. And that the scratched lens causes unwanted lines to appear on every print taken with the device. In short, the two photographs under consideration here were taken with the same camera. 
Hmm. Hmm. But... There must be hundreds of such camera devices here in the capital. It would be utterly impossible to identify the owner of this particular one. I think you're forgetting, Prosecutor Auchi. That one of the photographs featured in a newspaper article. A newspaper? Ah! That's right. The author of that article is the mystery witness to this crime. What? Where did Sosaki go? Me what? What was that? I see why you were called the raucous English attorney. Wouldn't the father know he was there for the picture? Right? You'd think he'd know. What are you yelling about? You're already, you've already testified. It's many memo. I tell you, many memo. What? Me, ni, me, mo. Um, Soseki san? What was that? Did you say many memo? Ever since I returned to Japan. A reporter from the Shoyu News has been hounding me, following my every move. A reporter by the name of Daiten Many Memo RM! Yes, hounding me from dawn till dusk. Ah, now that he mentions it. The secret spy staff staff knows our scrubber like prophecy. Could that same reporter be. A camera to the left of him, a notebook to the right. There I am, stuck in the middle with right and many more. So you're saying that this picture was taken by by many more? Yes, my lord, your excellency, Esquire. <laughs> Officer, find this newspaper reporter at once and bring him to my courtroom. We will adjourn for a short recess in the meantime. Oh. Yes, Your Excellency. As, as you say, Your Excellency. And one more thing. I want this knife, the murder weapon, examined for traces of poison. You, whoa, why did that skip? Oh, okay. You will solicit the assistance of the Imperial University's medical department for the task. Understood? Meh. Loser. Sore loser. Mini memo. <laughs> yeah, where did the reporter go all of a sudden? He just kind of disappeared. <gasps> to be continued, we hit a checkpoint. So it's clearly the photographer that killed her, but why? It's probably the things with the, the circles on the pen. It's probably a crest of, um, of, uh, whatchamacallit, of... An organization? But what? What would it be? Hmm. Anyways, I think this is a good place to stop for tonight. Hopefully, if it's the same as the first game, the next part of the trial will be the end of the first trial. And then we'll move on to the next one. So yeah, um, I'll just pick this up on Thursday again. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Is it cool if we raid my friends? Uh, Daring Player Squad? Yeah, sure. Raid channel. Uh, Daring Player Squad. Going! Alright, good night, everyone! Bye bye! Now, right now. Go, 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 go! Go! Cool.